Hey everyone, welcome back to Spyro Reignited Trilogy. This is me making up my, for my mistake last time and actually getting the skill point by charging all the bulls. Right into the ground. Yep. And now we continue where we left off at the Peacekeeper's World, where we meet our first dragon. And this pretty much sets the tone. Welcome to Peacekeeper's. Look how our treasure has been stolen and turned against us. Please. Recover our treasure, Spyro. Collect treasure. Got it. So the Peacekeeper's world is a war zone. They keep the peace by blowing <laughs> shit up. The American way. Yeah, that's probably the most American thing I could have seen. And I'm Canadian. You probably saw that I got a skill point there. Uh, at the time, I don't know what I did to get that skill point. Turns out, I got the skill point of have six of the Norks get scared of you and hide in the tents. I didn't know I did that, so out of nowhere I just get a skill point. I'm just like, what? What did I do? You made the enemies cower in fear. Yeah, the the enemies in this world are very unique. Um, that they, whenever you... Whenever they see you charging towards them, or whenever you flame one of their allies, they hide in these tents, and you have to flame them to get them out. And they do something really funny when you do that, which I'll show off in a second. Hey, Spyro! Sparks the Dragonfly has been doing a good job protecting you. Make sure to keep him strong by feeding him lots of butterflies. They do this. They shake their ass at you. Wow. And they only do it when you turn around, too. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it's it's the most fun. I'll, I'll show it off in a second. But it is the most fun to actually to actually turn around really quickly and get them while their ass is in the air. Just flame them in the ass. It's really fun. Because if you turn around too quickly, then they go back to pretending to cower. Well done, Spyro. Keep up the good work, and I know you'll fulfill your destiny. Destiny? I just want to kick some. Just toast those enemies and collect the treasure. Also, the dragons in this world just look cool. Uh, aesthetically, they're my favorite dragons. They're warrior dragons, is what they're supposed to be. Each one of them is not only very big and intimidating, but most of them are given their own weapon. Like you saw in the beginning, this is stupid by the way, this is me trying to like, realizing I made a mistake and like trying to get back to land. His legend lives on. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the first dragon we saw, he had an axe. Other dragons have like, shields and stuff, one has an arrow. Well, that's actually my fa one of my favorite design dragons, possibly my favorite. But we'll see a bunch of dragons later who actually carry weapons around with them. Again, in the old games, they would just copy paste the dragons with different colors. They get they they improved the dragons so much in this game. Also, these f cannons they are way better in this game too because in the old game they were a pain in the ass. You notice that little uh, that little wood thing that you push to turn the cannon? That wasn't in the original game, so you had to be at a super precise angle in order to turn the cannon. Because if you didn't, Spyro would just go charging off into the opposite direction. It was awful. They improved on it so much in this game. That's me actually showing off getting the Norks in the ass. <laughs> but now we're going to, into our first level, Dry Canyon. Look at how slow these bullets move. I don't think that's how bullets work. Yeah. Like I said, enemies are kind of pathetic. But, like, the, I, I try to do something cool here. I'm just like, how, how close can I actually get the bullet to me before I jump? Like, how bad can I look dodging a bullet? And I get pretty, and I get pretty close. Like, watch this. Jesus Christ. Insert Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne here. Yeah. And it's after that last dodge where I'm just like, yeah, that's close enough, I should probably kill the guy. I just realized that the Egg Thief kind of looks like he's wrapped in blue bandages. He is. 
it's hard. It was hard to tell in PS1, but that's definitely what it's supposed to be in this game. In the PS1, you know how PS1 graphics are. They were just like, like they didn't know how to design enemies, so they were, or they didn't have the t power to design real, uh, like, realistic-looking enemies, so they were just like, eh, just put a bunch of shapes together. Spyro. That is especially true with the first Spyro game, because we will see, like, later in the game, like, enemies get really weird looking, and that's because in the PS1, they, they couldn't, like, like, like the enemies were, were basically just a bunch of shapes smushed together. I was gonna say, I knew someone stole my drawings when I was a kid. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't envy anybody who had to work on this game, where they had to, like, basically take these obscure objects and be like, okay, make an HD version of this. It's like, so, you want me to make a 3D image of an inverted pentagon? Something I didn't know could exist, number one. Alright, then. This guy is my favorite dragon. Well, his exit animation is my favorite. Is that you, Spyro? You're the young dragon I've been hearing so much about. Ever since you were a wee puff of smoke, we've known... Uh, You've known... Uh, I forget. He sneezes, and then a flame from his nose ignites the bomb that he's holding. Oh no! That, he's my favorite. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's fine. It looks like he survived more than one explosion. Yeah, he, he's, he's fine. So I lost sparks. You'll notice that the the gems don't fly into me anymore. I actually have to walk up to them and collect them manually. That is the big downside to actually losing sparks. Like yeah, act the cuz sparks usually he collects the gems for you, but if you lose if you lose him, you actually have to walk into each gem individually and it takes up wet so a lot more time and it's a lot more annoying. So I think that's actually really clever. That's sort of your incentive to, like, not get damaged. It's a really creative way to, like, encourage the player to do better. Dry Canyon rewards good gliders. You are a good glider, eh, Spyro? I was born to glide. <laughs> he has a rattlesnake tail. <laughs> that's really cool. I love how stupid some enemies in video games act. Like, you were clearly right in front of him, and he's just like, should I shoot left or right? <laughs> Incredible glide, Spyro. I thought I'd be stuck here forever with those ugly vultures standing on my head. Those birds might look tough, but they're pretty tasty. Flame broiled with a pinch of salt. That's... Like, I think that's the one dragon that I think was done better in the original game. Because in the original game, he actually trailed off as he was talking. He was just like, flame broiled, a pinch of salt, and then he disappears. In this game, he actually finishes his sentence, so it's a lot less funny. That's like the one dragon that I think was done better in the original. Everybody gets one. Look at how delayed that death of that Nork was. Also, here Sparks being an asshole. <laughs> Just not doing his goddamn job. Get it yourself, you little sh**. What the hell would Sparks even sound like if he could talk? He does talk in one of the games, and it's super jarring and weird. And I ain't talking about David Spade Sparks, I'm talking about... You probably don't know what I'm referring to, but... Okay, so, there was a re reboot series called The Legend of Spyro. Um, in that game, they gave Sparks a voice. It was not the first time Sparks has had a voice. The first time he had a voice was in the fifth Spyro game, which was not developed by Insomniac, and is not part of this original trilogy. That game is called A Hero's Tale. You don't expect Sparks to talk in that game because it's the same continuity. But in the reboot series, Sparks has a voice from the very beginning, and he's voiced by, guess who, David Spade. Oh my god. 
Why can I hear it? <laughs> I never found David Spade Sparks annoying, but I'm like the one person in the world. I, th I, think, I feel like David Spade even finds his own voice annoying. Also, these lizards have the best animation in the whole game. I swear he's looking at me. Did you hear the Egg Thief laugh? They do that every five seconds. Oh, fun. How's a dragon supposed to flame metal armor anyway? Remember, Spyro, flame won't work on metal, but charge it with your horns? That should do the trick. They really want to make you want to kill these guys. Also, I lose track of them for a second. I go around the wrong building. I'm just like, where'd he go? But you gotta appreciate a video game, game video game company literally being like, okay, this guy steals eggs, and that's bad. But we need to make him sound so obnoxious that your desire to kill him outweighs your urge to get the egg back. Basically. Just like child abduction, yeah, whatever, that's that's like that's like right normal around here. But man, I hate your voice. As you can see, sometimes the egg thieves can be a like a trial to catch but he flew off the cliff so it's all worth it the world is saved from one more annoying person yep sadly it's not like real life where you don't get rewarded for killing an annoying person i know right it's fucking bullshit. <laughs> also just showing off that they actually added ground into this version and it looks really cool unlike the old ps1 where it was just like an empty void Definitely taking advantage of the uh, the newer generations and, well, the not having so much of a graphical limitation. Exactly. Hey, what's on the other side of that river? Why don't you glide there and find out? I thought that was the perfect place to cut. Uh, if you see me making cuts in these levels, it's because... A lot of my time spent in these levels is just me running around collecting any gems that I missed. And I'm just like, that would be really boring to sit through, so I'm just going to cut that stuff out. You've reached the highest point in Clifftown. You can get to almost anywhere from here. If I were you, I'd use that whirlwind over there. You're definitely putting more effort into editing your Let's Plays than I did with mine. Well, you record all yours live, don't you? Yeah. You don't get the chance to edit. Like, I recorded all this stuff beforehand, and, and edited it together for this Let's Play. Because I can't record live, I don't have a capture card. Or a good microphone. I think it got worse with the Yang plays, because, like, I'm recording live, I have to try maintaining my Yang voice, and in the case of Ruby Grim Eclipse, I have to find separate audio to play, because if I don't, then it'll get third-party claimed, by TuneCore, because it has the music from Ruby itself, so of course, I'm gonna get hit. Yeesh. Also, yeah, I've heard you slip out of Yang a few times. It's surprisingly difficult to maintain, even though it's just, like, a really bad Russian accent. I've studied acting for two years, and even I'm finding it hilarious that I can't maintain even a simple bad accent for long periods of time. Oh, you're telling me. I've I've lost my Jean Spanish accent so many times. Anyway, this is Ice Cavern. It's really pretty. I just sequence breaked. How do you like that shit? <laughs> this is going to be a special level where I'm going to be doing it in reverse. This is the opposite way you're supposed to complete, complete the level. Screw the rules. <laughs> Screw the rules. I have gems. Freeing me, Spyro. And now, oh, where was I? This dragon carries himself like a grandfather, but he looks like he could break me with his tail. Alone. A lot of the dragons, when you free them, they'll like say something pompous, like, "Oh, th these enemies wouldn't be anything to me." So, but for you, like, you better make sure to like not charge them when they're wearing armor. And it's just like, well, well, if they're not such a big deal to you, why don't you take them out, huh? Why are you making me do everything? You're free now! Ah, uh, yes. 
video game logic. These enemies are no big deal for me, but I've got uh, something to do over there, so you take care of them. It never even is actually explained why Nasty doesn't just freeze Spyro and Crystal as well. Like, in the original game, I guess it was implied that he just n didn't notice him because Spyro's so much smaller than the other dragons. But in this game, Nasty clearly sees Spyro say, Looks like I've got some things to do on the TV, and he just doesn't care. So I guess he just doesn't see Spyro as a threat? I ah, yes, the old, I don't see this small, frail little creature as anything of a threat. Suddenly, biggest threat to your existence. Genius. The Norks aren't very smart. You've done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Uh, ready for what? Huh. I, I think your game might have affected reality a little bit. Did it? Because I'm... Well, I'm looking out my window right now, and I'm seeing that it's snowing. And you're... Don't shoot or it. The power of PS4. I'm, like... Like, I get it. I live in Canada, I'm Canadian, and the joke is, we're covered in white bullshit all the time. But, we have a time, especially in where I'm from, Ottawa, where we don't have white bullshit for most of the year. I think Mother Nature just gave me a huge middle finger. Thank you for releasing me. Can, can you believe that some people actually... Okay, so in the original game, since they could not make every single dragon look unique, they just copy-pasted the same dragon model. The thing is, that to make the dragon stand out just a little bit, they made sure that the Peacekeeper's dragons, Artisan's dragons, all the different dragons from each homeworld looked different. So even though all the dragons were the exact same, the Peacekeeper's dragons only looked like Peacekeeper dragons, the Artisan Dragons only had that one model that was only used for Artisan Dragons. And people got angry at this game because, like, well, now the Peacekeeper Dragons don't look, don't look that different from the Artisan's Dragons. What the hell? And I'm just like, guys, they can make the dragons look as creative as they want now. Why would you have them limit their creativity just to keep in line with the old game? Spyro, some big norks up ahead are wearing armor. And in the ice cave, armor can make their feet very slippery. Hmm. That's my favorite dragon design. He looks so unique and cool. I love him. He's got like a bird thing going on. Okay, I, I thought I was going crazy. I'm like, what's with his eyes? And then you brought up, he's got like a bird thing. I'm like, okay, so, so I'm not going crazy. Oh, some of the dragons just like... I, I, I love it. Some of the dragons just look weird. And I love it when the dragons look weird, because I'm just like, hey! Like, they don't just all look copy-paste, like before. Like, the more weirder you can make the dragons look, the better, in my opinion. Because I want the dragons to all look visually distinct from each other, so like... It, it makes the game a lot more interesting. Like, ooh, what's this one gonna look like? Like, I can walk up to a dragon and actually be interested in their design, which was not a thing in the old game. The only thing you really cared about was, like, seeing what they had to say, and since most of them either said, thank you for releasing me, or just said some stuff that you already know, like this guy. Word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before charging those large enemies. Yeah, it just says... Also, I, I see this little hole in the in the wall and see if I can squeeze through it to kill myself. I can't. But, uh... Uh... No suicide for you. But, um... Yeah, a lot of the dragons just tell you stuff like... Like that dragon. We're in the second homeworld already. We have seen multiple enemies that are big and have armor. And he's still just like, Hey, don't charge the big guys in case you forgot. So a lot of useless dragons in this game. So, the... The more interesting you can make freeing the dragons, the better. That was a long way of me just saying, like, hey, the dragons look cool. But again, some people, some, some people have problems with how the dragons are handled, and I just do not get it. 
Anyway, we're at the boss now, Dr. Shemp. We'll see the boss in a minute, but I really like these minor enemies in the level because you'll notice that that one just ran off a cliff. It was in the it was really in the background, so it was hard to see, so I try to get a better view of them running off the cliff. Cause like if they miss you, they will just keep on running. Unfortunately, I'm not doing a good job of doing that, and I'm just getting hit. Also, Jesse, maybe you can explain what happens here. Because I rewatched the footage a couple of times, and I'm still not entirely sure. What the? I, I thought for a second you, like, went into the the rock, the stone, the, the wall. I, I think I did. You just transcended reality. Like, maybe you can... Maybe you can explain what happened there, because I sure as <laughs> don't. Uh, yeah, I, I, I saw that. I don't even... But I don't get a very... I think, I think when you see one of them, like, run off the cliff in the background as I'm transcending this mortal coil, but... <laughs> Dr. Shemp thinks he's so cool. You don't know what it's been like listening to him over and over. But I tell you one thing. He should watch his back. Very cool design. Very cool design. It makes... And literally makes me think, uh... Someone would design a character like that in Dungeons & Dragons. Also rather intimidating in the way he says back and he shoves his dagger forward. But that's actually a hint in how you fight this guy. You gotta... He's, wear, he's a big guy, he wears metal armor, so... Just like all the other enemies like that, you gotta get him in the back. You wait till he... You fight him, you wait till he turns around, and then you flame him. Very simple, boss. The key to defeating any opponent, whether in video games or life, is to burn their butts. <laughs> also, why is he not wearing any pants? Because he's cool like that. Look at how cool he is. He's got the sunglasses. Which my dad used to think when I was a kid, because this was the PS1. Like, he used to think that he was just blind. Like, I'm just fighting a blind guy. And I'm like, that. And my dad's just like, that's kind of cruel. And he's just like, that's why he just turns around and, like, doesn't attack you and, like, shows his back. He can't see. You're just beating up a blind person. Like, okay, that might be kind of cruel, but that still sounds really funny. Yeah. It'd also be insane if it's like, he attacked you while you're thinking he's a blind guy. It's like, okay, you just got hit by a blind guy. Who looks stupid now? Well, now I have to kill you. I can't let the world know. No one will ever know. I was beat up by a bl I was beat up by a blind person. He'll never see it coming. Uh... Eh? Eh? Yeah. Eh? <clears throat> I'm, I'm actually... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid, uh... You'll never see it coming! Ah, damn it. Juicy. That, that, that's... I don't know what the lyric is. That's all... That's just what I hear. This... This flight is bullshit. <laughs> This is the worst level in the game. Probably. Might be. Probably is. You move so slow. I'm thinking, why the F did it only give you... Only give you one second. And... Ooh! That is like my... Eighth attempt. Down to the actual wire, too. Jeez. As you'll notice that at the beginning of the level, I had to stop and turn my- drop to the floor and turn myself around. That's the only way I've actually managed to complete that level. That level's bullshit. But thankfully it's over, and we're off to the Magicrafters world next time! Next time!